一走动太多的情况，以免呢挡到其他球迷朋友的视线。那我们互相配合，互相尊重，感谢各位。那我们等一下再精彩的比赛见。好，那如果已经到位置上的朋友呢，麻烦帮我们换上我们 New Type Kings 的应援 T， 一起来为我们新北国王加油应援。我们的比赛准备，等一下就要开始了。我们希望今天的大家，所有在城堡内的诸位，都可以用你们最大的力量、最大的声音，把你们的加油棒以及拍拍扇拿出来，用力的敲打。我们等一下精彩的比赛见。Perfecting my past and thanks for asking. Couldn't slow down, so we had to crash it. You use plastic, we bout cash. I see some people ahead that we gon' pass. Yeah. I never fear death or dying. I only fear never trying. I am whatever I am. Only God can judge me now. One shot, everything rides on tonight. Even if I got three strikes. That I ride with be the same ones that I die with. Put it all out on the line with. If you're looking for me, you can find with in the new car or the crown with my new bra. Does a fine chick in the weather squad? I'm down with. Ain't no way around it. What you say? Tell me what you say. Working hard, repping for my dogs. Do this every day. Taking off, looking out for all. Making sure we ball like the mob. All you do is call. Catch you if you fall, young Khalifa. I never fear death or dying. I only fear never trying.、Uh. Judge me now. One shot, everything rides on tonight. Even if I got three strikes, I'ma go for it. This moment, we own it. I ride or die to be played with, because it can get dangerous. See, I ride or die. People I ride with. This moment, we own it. I see what you've been trying to do, and I'm a mission to border. You think I never pay attention? In my mind, I'm recording. I'm 'bout to win and ruin all your goals and dreams out of boredom. Riding around with homies like we run the city, looking fresh and feeling like a milli. Moving silence, you can never hear me. If you got a problem when you see me, run it.
朋友们，大家好！季后赛来了，我是今天的主持人，交给彭尊的彭尊。大家好久不见，我是你们今天的主持人，汉迪汉迪利。大家给我跟彭尊一个最大的尖叫声！看来现场所有的球迷朋友。都已经准备好 ，We ready？ 没错，我们的季后赛的全新口号 ，We ready？ 一共七个字母，也代表国王最终的七场试炼，拿下七场胜利，迈向顶点的荣耀之路。今天呢，我们也要拿下我们的第一个 W， 也就是我们的第一场胜利。那今天呢，我们一样是活动满满。首先呢，你们座位上都会有，应该会有一件黄色的 T 恤，麻烦你们，我们一起穿上它。晚上等等，我们一起掀起黄色浪潮。那一进来呢，我们 We Ready 的签名墙，大家呢可以在第一个字母 W 写下呢，你对我们禁卫军想说的话，让我们在 Game One 第一场比赛呢填满所有的 W。没错，那我们在城堡的周边活动也有增设我们皇家宝座的拍照区。如果大家有看到，就是我们昨天上传到我们社群平台毛总座的那一个皇家宝座。那我们呢，希望大家可以坐到我们皇家宝座拍照区呢，坐上王位拍照，并且上传到个人的社群，并且即可获得国王所提供的周边小礼。那今天真的是有太多活动了，另外还有三分球预测，以及呢敏哥的 MVP 套圈圈，奥迪投篮机 Ariel 零二城堡，夹球鞋的球鞋机，好不好？希望大家可以等一下呢，还有一点小时间可以去体验一下。那另外呢，我们中场游戏呢将举办我们 MVP 罚球大赛，那我们将邀请四位球迷呢来进行一场 PK， 那获胜的朋友我们可以获得敏哥。二一二二赛季 MVP 的摇头公仔，以及呢签名纪念框 MVP 组合。等一下呢，我们在招募中场游戏的时候，记得发出你的噪音，让我们找到你。没错，好的。那在精彩的比赛开始之前呢，我们的新北市大家长侯友谊侯市长呢，带来了一段影片，想要跟我们新北市民以及禁卫军说几句话。那麻烦呢，我们大家一起把我们的目光放到上方的大荧幕。各位球迷，各位球迷，大家好，我是新北市长侯友谊。首先恭喜新北国王以 P L E 联盟龙头的姿态打进季后赛，你们是我们新北市的骄傲。新北市，新北国王准备好了 ，We ready。勇闯季后赛，夺得总冠军，荣耀新北市。好的，接下来呢，让我们用最大的暴动声，欢迎我们新北国王拉队 New t a i p e Chris 所带来的开场表演。
kind of beat to go right tap 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 it's the kind of beat to go right tap tap Come 十八號楊盛燕請所有球迷將目光一致上方打螢幕 This isn't new territory for us We've been here before We made the playoffs But we haven't done anything yet We still got a lot of work to do Lock in on the details. Lock out the noise. Are you ready? It's go time. Number two, like Taiwan Sida, Xiao Sushi, Lin Number nine, China Ho Tam Si Hui Guan, Sipa Bravo Wei Gui, Lin Kai Yen. Number twenty four, Guan Jian Da Xing Zhang, Xiao Hang, Hong. Number ten, Jin Wei Jun, Gong Jian Shou, Wei Xiao Shou Shou, Jin Jin, Jian Yu Zhe. Number eleven, Jin Wei Jun, Gong Jian Shou, Wei Xiao Shou Shou, Jin Jin, Jian Yu Zhe. 
Number three， 来自国立体大，小米陈俊南。Number nineteen， 皇家大锁，榜哥林俊宝。Number twenty five， 来自政治大学，欧马尔小 Q， 聂欧马。Number fifty， 警卫局门神，火锅三 Q， 可是。接下来为各位介绍新北国王先发五人 ，Starting Five。Number one， 就这样被你征服，就是你，李世来。Number fifty five， 新北直升机，年糕 ，Candy Candy Go。Number seventeen， 金卫军瑞士刀，我大叔是舒世勋。Number five， 禁区猛兽，帝王木，熊大。Finally, number six, 警卫军士官长，新北的阿美族战士，杨杨杨杨志明。中间我要马上处理一下，马凯他的许浩辰，田能教练刘振宇，首席田能教练张崇熙，七名分析师林振宇，球队经理黄志虎，防务员邱柏凯、吴崇豪，总经理毛家恩，执行长陈信生。
time to give it your all. It's the Plus League Season 3 Playoffs. After the 120 game Odyssey, the field is narrowed down to four teams to vie for the title of the Plus League Champions. We begin at Shingon Gymnasium, home of the new Taipei Kings, who claim the number one seed after their 27 win, 13 loss season, clinching their playoff ticket on March 28th and home court advantage to the playoffs on April 30th. On the visitor side is the latest member to the party, the Formosa Taichi Dreamers, winning four straight to end the regular season, including all the important final showdown. On the road against the Steelers, they have made it to the Plus League playoffs in every single year of the Plus League history. On the Mandarin broadcast, it's Aaron Yang Zhenlei and Eddie Zhang Yongzong. Chao Yin Pei Yong Men, you follow up Plus League. The Yiwen Chuan Bo, you can Zhang Zhenlei and Yang. Today I'm joined by Kyle Hudson on the commentary. Kyle, good to be in the playoffs with you. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. It's great to be here. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great game. The crowd is definitely starting early, giving them some noise, so it should be a great contest between these two teams. There'll be a lot to cover as this is our very first playoff game on the season, as we mentioned. It's a whole brand new season as the Kings on their side definitely want to feel that way. Last year, making the playoffs as the first time in team history, but falling short in the, against the Pioneers. Kings, funny enough, finishing the season at the Lioneers' home where they lost in Game 5 to conclude their season last year. Amigo, in particular, had a disappointing Game 5 to close out the series. They're trying to look for redemption on their side with Joseph Lynn, one of the biggest additions. Kyle, how do you think the Kings feel last year clinching the playoffs first, but then dropping to number 4 in the regular season this year, hanging on to home court advantage throughout the playoffs should they make it to the finals? Your thoughts? Yeah, I tell you what, you know, exiting in Game 5 last Last season that definitely leaves a mark and it stings stings a lot so the Kings have you know fought their way back they they played really well this season and uh, you know home court advantage is always something to to want and you know the crowd's gonna be behind them and you know they're used to these rims used to these baskets so it should be a little in their favor today but well we'll talk about a little later Ryan um, about the dreamers and their their past playoff experiences we spoke to people pregame <laughs> 这个位置，那当然，嗯，对手是谁，我们都还不清楚。然后我们也只有四天的时间可以去做调整，所以希望在呃最后一次的休息日前能够跟大家讲，下礼拜开始我们真的是要准备好我们自己。对，所以因为过
you know, they got the Dreamers got to help, which could leave uh, Amigo open for some easier buckets, and that could increase his uh, points per game here in the playoffs. That's right. And help includes Joseph Lynn second in non-imports and plus minus at plus 202, only second to his brother Jeremy Lynn, who came on partway through the season. But Amigo is third among non-import players of 14.8 points still. And that would be close to the first season score, local scoring leader of Jet, Zhang Dongxian. So still a very efficient player himself. They even have last year's first teamer, Kyle Lee Kayan, come off the bench because of Joseph slotting in nicely to that starting role. And so no matter who's playing well or not, they can play off of each other or play in tandem together. And that's a luxury Marchand has in the second season. And of course, Quincy Davis being available two years in a row has been great for them too. Yeah, it's great to have a lot of returning players as well from the Kings, but having a very strong, you know, starting five, but also a good bench as well. And, you know, each players have to play their role, especially in the playoffs. On the other side, it's Coach Eric Leibowling who took over the squad on January 10th for originally Kyle Julius's squad. The offensive scheme is a lot the same, but I'm sure the way that they rally the troops has got a different flavor. Uh, Eric Leibowling and his streamer squad have quite the season. He spoke three games. Nojuyanjudal 為了最後一場其實張力還蠻大的那其實這四件讓我們看分的心情跟狀態就是大家是很希望贏球的很渴望贏球的那因為上禮拜也辛苦拿下來我覺得可以應該可以延續到這禮拜的比賽那我覺得這樣子是我們近期的練習啊去觀察到他們這樣的組合跟配合是比較對我們的球風是比較想要的那我覺得其實跟國王也是希望可以找我們的快速的球風跟壓迫的防守所以我才選擇這個組合 Eric Leibowling sharing that the team had even less turnover to get their squad ready as they had to play to the final day, saying they channeled the emotion from their 2 OT loss to the Braves in the first season. And they still have the desire to win a championship, so maybe trying to channel that end of regular season emotion to continue on to the playoffs as well, as between these two teams, one streak will have to end. The Dreamers have won every single first game on the road in their playoff history, but the Kings are 2-0 at home, of course, losing all three on the road against the Lioneers. But the Dreamers having that quick turnaround from Sunday to Friday it just compiles their difficulty, but they seem to embrace that challenge. Yeah, the Dreamers have been playing every game like it's their last. They've had to fight tooth and nail up until the very end. And I think, you know, that's something the, the Kings didn't have to do. They could give up some more games. Uh, they didn't really need the wins coming down the stretch. But uh, the Dreamers had to, to fight as hard as they can. And I think that definitely will show today that they're not going to give up uh, by any means. So let's watch the Dreamers come out uh, very strong against, you know, the home team of the Kings. Let's pull back the... Uh scope a little bit the dreamers were three games out of fourth place in week 11 at five and ten but fast forward to week 16 they took a pair of fourth place back from the lion years and theoretically have not looked back but they were tied with the steelers in week 25 before eventually going on their run meanwhile the kings have led the league standings for 24 out of the 27 weeks of the season. There's our officiating staff, Tim Paul, me, will be the crew chief. And let's bring you the starting lineups with the Dreamers left to right, Hayden, Wu Jajun, Ryan Lu Guanyang, Kenny Chan, Chris McCullough, and Brandon Gilbeck. And on the King side, Joseph Lin next to Kenny Manigold, Amigo, James Abel, Big Sushi, and Byron Mullins. As mentioned, the Kings clinched the uh, regular season 
all the way back on March 28th. And the first seed overall to the season a few weeks back on April 30th. And they've had plenty of games having to rotate their sides. But now a game in full strength in a New Jersey. I must say, their playoff grays. The tip is up and controlled by the Dreamers to start us off. Chris McCullough at the high post. And Hayden now with Joseph Lynn guarding. And the Gilbeck as there's only nine seconds left on the clock. Trying to go a fadeaway over Byron Mullins, but it dances off the rim. Yeah, we're seeing some early pressures from the, the Dreamers. They don't want to make anything easy for the Kings and try to wear them out for later on in the game. So, well, let's see if they can get the first bucket of the game right here. Joseph in the mid-range, too strong with the foot footer. And a quick drag screen, Hayden to Gilbeck, but they cover it up. So, big sushi. Trying to guard McCullough, hearing the boos. Not the story for a second as his turnaround is off. The crowd is definitely giving the Kings all their support tonight as, you know, Ryan, you mentioned there's some boos and all the cheering on that rebound, so. And a foul and the loudest cheers of the evening so far as Kenny Chen hand caught in the, against former teammate and Amigo back from their very first season. So maybe our first points as Amigo will step up to the line. The story, though, is that in their final game, the Dreamers against the Steelers, incidentally, we should say, McCullough went up for a rebound, and Jeremy underneath him probably closed in on that space to apply pressure, took a knock to the face, and then fell hard, and eventually, we suspect a concussion. He was left out for the entire game, so, of course, I can't say it's hopefully not ill intention, but indeed Chris McCullough was the one involved in that play that would have had a different look for the rest of the game as Hayden wants to get it back. And Gilbeck trying to stuff it back, but it's the Kings on the break, already up by two. And he goes to Ryan and the foul. Yeah, we see Manny Gold just push the pace off that quick board. Uh, you got to do something to stop him or else that little crossover creates some space. Very patient as we see and finishes at the rim. That's going to be something that the Kings are going to look forward um, as they do have the highest uh, and the fastest pace in all of the league. So He bounces in the free throw, and that's a 5-0 run to start for the home team. Over to Kenny Chen, he among two other Dreamers teammates to play all 13 of their Dreamers career playoff games as another miss. And it's another run out for the Kings of Beagle so far, he got it. And just like that, a timeout called by the Dreamers. And Kings didn't forget about last year's two games at home. An 8-0 start will send us to our first timeout. You're watching the Plus League Playoffs. Queens have a new outfit for the playoffs. All right, all right. 
Be sure to like up on every uh, Plus League stream, including our playoff action. If you just joined us, the New Taipei Kings, the number one overall seed in the regular season, with home court advantage, off to an 8-0 to zero start. The biggest note is defending on one end and taking it quickly the other way. Yeah, the Dreamers had to take that quick timeout. They're flanked by uh, Kenny Chen. You know, that 8-0 run, if you don't uh, try to break up that rhythm early, it can get away from you really fast. As we just saw, you know, three possessions um, put you up 8-0 real quick. The foul as Hayden was trying to chase Joseph there. We had to start so quickly. Didn't get to mention Dreamers in their white version of their Seatown jerseys. Hayden Wu Jadring. And Ryan Lu Guan Yang. New additions to the Dreamers as James will step up for the three, but that one's halfway down and out. You know, both the other these way. teams are probably going to be shooting threes a lot this game, so they all, it all could come down to three point uh, percentages. We're going down, finding the corner and firing away. Apollo or Brisk, as his nickname goes, had a hand on it. But it's the Kings with another stop. Amigo cross matched up. Nice find as Sushi gets the lay in. Around yeah. McCullough. And it's not exactly a full house, but it is loud in here. Yeah, Ryan, this is uh, probably the most energy I've felt from a crowd in a long time. And, you know, we're just sitting on the sidelines. We're not even playing. Aiden picks up the dribble and hands it off to Kenny. Gilbeck screen and pushes it in for the first points for the Dreamers. But quickly the other way, Amigo had a chance, but somebody got a hand on the basketball. Well, Gilbeck's taking a big step in his second year with the team. Seeing his scoring average now up to 17 points per game in the mainstay of the Dreamers lineup. They're kind of zoned up in the middle as Joe leaves it off and big sushi once again. You know, we see Joseph just, uh, you know, filling up some space, making sure to get that double team in. You know, once Gilbert came over to help, that just laid for that easy uh, bounce pass at the rim. Now Hayden will try from three. He rolls it in. An improved three-point shooter from his last season as a pilot. This year, even on the leaderboard for the Dreamers at 35 percentage points from beyond the arc. And y'all can't get the answer, but charging in there for his own board, but Hayden took a shot to the elbow. The referees have not exactly given him time until now. Took a funny shot, and he's still holding on. And it's kind of curious, as long as the Dreamers have win, Aji finally now at the scorer's table, ready to come in. You know, you don't want to see anyone hurt especially in that situation on that elbow, as we see right there. Ooh, somewhere between McCullough and uh, Kenny Manigal coming in there, but there you see the, maybe it's a, hopefully just a stinger. Aji or Luca's in. I don't know we'd like to talk about later in the game, but again, Brisk with the ISO and the jump shot. Got it back for the reload, and still off. Look at the other floor. Big Sushi, you could lay it in through the contact. Good defense by Lupin now. Numbers for the Dreamers as Chris blocked by the Collins. Intercepted the other way, though. Kenny Chen trying to make up for that last miss. Big still by Gilbeck, no. Oh, another quick shot. He is still over and right now it's just a two-man game right there for the Dreamers. Yeah, we're seeing uh, McCullough take a lot of tough shots that very early in the possession as well as we saw he got that he got his rebound off of a missed jumper and then immediately went back up with a three. So I, I think the Dreamers should be a little more patient, uh, especially McCullough as he can uh, space the floor with his size. 
Now, to his credit, last year as a member of the new Taipei Kings was top five in the import players of scoring for 36. As the two referees on the outside say a shot clock violation. Well, the official in the trail spot signaled the three, but he's supposed to also keep an eye on the clock. They take it away, and there's another foul with Amigo going down, but Kenny Chen trying to plead his innocence. Looks like he'll head off for Jeff Wu. Get another look at what was going on. A little bit of a hand, and uh, indeed Amigo mostly slipping on Big Sushi there. Yeah, with the game going so fast, you know, even little movements, even from your teammate, could cause you to fall down and, you know, potentially injure yourself. Luckily, uh, Amigo got up and he's all right. Leaving uh, James open wide again, and he swishes it. Already spent that early time now, but now it is an early 10-point deficit for the Dreamers on the road. Lupa now wide open from the left side, and he overshoots it. Right now, probably some fatigue for these Dreamers. Definitely some nerves, but the argument for the other side is you would have thought the Kings were a little bit rusty, as we said. Haven't played the most competitive. As Byron Mullins, nice step, but had that one swatted away by Gilbeck. The lead leader in block shots will stay in along with Derek Lee, though, way. Get another look at Gilbeck dutifully manning the back. That was great help defense there. Um, you know, once Mullins got past his man, he was at the rim ready for that uh, shot block. Amigo wide open from the baseline, and he bottoms it. Seems like the Dreamers are leaving a lot of players open. Uh, last time we saw James hit that three, no one around him. And it just kind of Amigo hit that baseline jumper, so the Dreamers going to have to catch up. This time off the dribble is still off the mark. Bold shooting start for the Dreamers. Well, they wanted to probably tell you the starts on the defense and has Joseph Flynn on the reverse. Byron Mullins took a tumble and he's got to get back in the action as Brandon Gilbeck called for the charge. That is not a good trade for the Dreamers. Uncle Q hanging in there and not blocking the shot, but getting the turnover on the charge. You see Manny Gall second in the league in assists with a dime there, and Quincy Davis just predicted Gilbeck. The two of them have gone back and forth. You know, the momentum currently is all with the Kings, and, you know, the Dreamers can't take another quick timeout because they'll just uh, waste it. So, I don't know, they're going to have to do something, come up on the defensive end, as, you know, they've been slacking a little bit on these back cuts. A little bit too careless with the pass, and you'd say probably the first mistake by the Kings all game. Substitution to get Jin Ho, or Doug Creighton in for the cold shooting Ryan. Machi crossing over with an opening. Can't get it. Wow, Lee Kayan is in as well, along with Joseph. As a quick baseline drive is a foul and free throws for number one. Joseph Lin coming in over from a trade with the Braves, who are the two seed in the plus league this season. He and Amigo from the Kings are front runners for the MVP title. First free throw was made, as I mentioned. This second got his own board. And a go back taps it in. It would have counted anyways. So a uh, 
two for one trade off is definitely not ideal if you're the Dreamers. Giving up a free throw rebound. And then the goaltending more out of frustration. Now yeah, we're seeing the Dreamers making a lot of tiny mistakes that are adding up huge over the long run. Uh, and it's only the first quarter. You definitely got to block out the free throw shooter as. You know, that's one of the, the top top stars' uh, job, but you know, we see he didn't get that and let take easy two points on, on the other end. You can't just give up those easy baskets. Amigo in the corner guarded by Jim. Oh, I don't believe those two have ever been teammates despite their long careers playing pro basketball. I'm running low. Joseph through the swarm of defenders. It was close. You know, even though Joseph didn't make that shot, it's really unpredictable which hand he's going to shoot with, you know, either right hand or left hand. Um, so it makes it really tough to guard, as we see on the other end. Uh, There's an offensive foul. They say Aji was too physical with Joe. And they say their mistakes are compounding as the Dreamers are looking toward the bench, but no movement. That will be uh, Aji's second, but there you see the disadvantage on the contact. So Aji with two personal and seven on the team. Number 10, JJ Jayota will check in. And making up for his kind of mistake, Aji gets a turnover on Lee Kai Yin's control. You know, pressuring up really early uh, doesn't not only put the pressure on the ball handler, but you know, it tires them out in the long run and makes it really hard for them to get into the flow of the offense and you know those are one of those times where you get that turnover that you need. Doug on the catch and shoot Chris with a put back dunk. So something relatively easy for the Dreamers going their way. On this block out. Ukayan showing off his flexibility but not exactly in the flow of offense as Joe to JJ from the corner. Got it. JJ Jayota, last year in the playoffs, was trying to get his feet wet, really, after up and down season as their time. Aji now doing Joe on the low block, in fact. Hugh, one handed rebound, another JJ three. There it goes, got it! Another one! Dowd is on 28 to 9. And that offensive board um, on the Kings end, you know, that's something that you can definitely give, that you cannot give up for the Dreamers on the defensive side as, you know, that leads to second chance points. And in this case, uh, second chance three pointer. Lead leader in steals, Kenny Manigal picks on the pass. And a little skip pass, Kyle with a three. One bounce and no. Would have imagined that Eric might have considered using his second timeout if that bounced in. You know, Aji off of one foot. Seems like the Dreamers on offense aren't moving the ball around too much. Not a lot of ball presence, uh, you know, off ball cuts and things like that. And, in history there, but we've seen the Kings really push the ball um, and drive it a lot and make sure to find the open man, and that's led to a lot of open three pointers tonight. So I want to see you know, the Dreamers maybe try to pass the ball a little bit more, uh, get the defense moving, which leads to open players when you know the defense has got to help. They call a foul on Quincy Davis, but previously just helping one pass away off the corner shooter. A flurry of subs for both teams going on now. Joe will take a seat on the bench. It's a little bit early, but uh, plus 19 is a pretty solid start to the game. Yeah, if you want to break down a team early, uh, you want to come out strong, come out, come out hot, and put a lot of pressure on them. And now you know, the Kings are putting a lot of pressure on the Dreamers, and they're going to have to dig their way out of this one uh, coming to the fourth quarter. Only one for two. 
the Dreamers and Kings as a team overall. Surprising, not at, not that prolific from the free throw line is Manny Gall at an angle with another miss. Jeff Blue slicing through, hanging on, and he will score the and one. The number 14 jumping in here to save the bacon of the Dreamers just a bit. Here you see on the drive. A few swipes from all over. And best look on that play was indeed the trailing official on you know, We were talking earlier about how the Kings is the fastest team in terms of pace in this league, but you know the Dreamers aren't that slow either. They're, they're willing to push the pace and try to get those easy baskets and those hand ones like we saw in that last play. A little foul underneath as Backup big Dobotun and Quincy Davis kind of in that hand fight. Yeah, we see a lot of contact here. Uh, Davis trying to get some position, but you know, maybe a little too much. A little too much force there, but you know, two free throws coming up. It's not the uh, first. Dobotun also came over in free agency along with Lu Guanyang. Machi and McCullough Defense! finally figuring out their screen as the early push shot, but over jumping the rebound, Dobotun. What a decent opportunity. Shot clanked as finally the Dreamers are catching some breaks on the defensive end. Jeff Wu with the left hand slide away by Manny Gall. The uh, official down low, I think they're going to give goaltending. But impressive defensive effort by Kenny Manigal. It sure was close, but he's in very deep position there. If it was a goaltend, just what athleticism we saw from Manigo just playing above the rim. Missed assignment, but Kyle blows the close one and has to put his head down to get out of there. Again, another missed assignment by the Dreamers. And Manigo floated up. Quincy Davis with a soft tip. Two more points for the Kings as the clock running down on the first quarter. Last six seconds, you gotta find your man, can't give up. Easy points here. Jeff Wu, this time off glass, was swatted out. And there will be point three left on the clock. That smart play by Manigold there. Just trying to get that ball out of the paint. Uh, you don't want any easy putbacks in that situation with the time running down. Rather have them take the ball at half court and have them take a really tough shot right here. So he does try to catch and shoot, but it wouldn't have counted. And that's the uh, first quarter in the books, a 31 to 15 quarter for the Kings. And the playoffs are on. We'll be back after these messages. Lion, Gentlemen,比出我们胜利的W。哎，战也是OK的。Kings，Three，OK。这是标准示范，Queens为大家示范的标准示范。来哦，来球场注意一下我们大屏幕，跟着比，输我们W可以哦，两个人一起，这个也没问题，OK，OK。但你可以换上黄色的T恤，OK吗？这是我们今天的音
。哎 ，Hello， 欢迎来到新庄体育馆。就跟你说要准备一下，跟着我们比出胜利的 W。Yes, sir. This is the dream of the Bumbo Sassesi. He has come to the stage. Plus League Playoff merch ready to go. Spend 1,000 NT and more and have your shipping covered. Head to pleagueofficial.com slash shop. So the season series between these two teams is the Dreamers, three wins to the Kings, five wins. But the caveat being the last two games, the Kings didn't have their full squad to go against the Dreamers. In fact, they only had Kenny Manigal and Byron Mullins, respectively. There's uh, Mrs. Lynn hanging out. One brother, season over. And Probably making plans and headed back to the States. The other in the game so far with a comfortable lead. And Emmanuel had that one deflected, but the Kings hang on as Kyle is free from the elbow. And the Kings getting that shooting touch back. You know, so far, the Kings have been shooting really well in the first quarter. They shot. 44% from two and 50% from three. So, you know, if they keep those number up, then we can see this lead grow. Hayden out to Jeff, avoids one, but the pass deflected out of bounds. That's one of those thinking a little bit too much. Jeff Wu did play pretty solid in the last game against the Steelers. Three of seven three-point shooting was second in lead to Aji. Venti holds the set, trying to apply pressure, but he's beat off the dribble. The light goes off, and it's Quincy Davis off to the run. Dreamers this time get back fast enough. That was the key. Their energy level versus the Steelers. Oh, a little bit of a dangerous move, but uncalled. As Venti gets it off to Manigal, seven seconds off the clock. Faking the shot, now getting trapped in the corner. Lucky to even get it on the rim. A stop for the Dreamers. Doug on the down screen, then the hand up fires away off to the left. And the shooting woes from the Dreamers are still apparent as in the first quarter. They shot 10% from the three. Makes it the second one in a row, this time from three. Now the score is 36. They switch, but McCullough left open. Kind of forced away to the other side, and Gilbeck cleans up the could have been miss. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of offensive rebounds from both teams, leading to pretty easy, I would say, second chance baskets. So. You know, each rebound here could equal two points, and you know, two points could be the difference in this game. Manigal rails a three and Christian's face. You know, it was raining earlier this morning here in Taipei, and uh, you know, it seems to be raining here again inside the stadium with all these threes coming down. Oh, we could put Re Weatherman to your resume now. Beating Chris and uh, getting the tripping call on the shot attempt as Chris McCullough was backpedaling more so than actually playing defense there. And so foul was a problem for the Dreamers in the first quarter. Then another look at Gilbeck mismatched and it showed on the defense. But there, Lee Kayin taking the bump, at least getting the layup off for a two point shooting foul coming up. We saw the Kings get hot in the first quarter and going off on an 8-0 run and uh, you know we're seeing a second run potentially coming up right now as the Kings still shooting well even in the second quarter and you know getting a lot of second chance baskets and getting to the free throw line a lot as well, drawing a lot of fouls on the Dreamer side. So let's see if that continues this quarter. Lukayan can only go one for two, but a personal six point start for the number nine guard. Kenny getting the screen, jumping into the mid range, floating it up and in. 
Yeah, that's beautiful by Kenny there, just attacking the basket, being very patient. And that's something I like to see the Dreamers do a little bit more, you know? They're trying to take the ball uh, too fast when that's leading to a lot of turnovers on the other end. Quincy Davis will drop in a three himself. Got a little bit stuck trying to put a one-on-one -on -one move on Gilbeck, but then the fake handoff led to something open as Kenny gets tripped up by Q there, coming underneath. Quincy Davis trying to say he got elbowed, but the referee's probably saying the dangerous positioning down there as Quincy Davis shows off the range. On the season, a 33% three-point shooter, and that last replay makes me think there is nothing but a foul by the defense there. Uh, a little tough, tough call as you see Davis go out. Uh, Doug Clayton will go off for Ryan. Interesting, they handed out those uh, floatable foams on the uh, visitor side at least. Yeah, you can not only play with them, but now's the perfect time to distract the Dreamers from shooting their free throws in. I'll tell you what, uh, I'd be distracted if I was at the free throw line. And you know, maybe it worked there because he missed the second free throw. His ball movement from the Kings. A little give and go. And that creates so much space. But a um, bad this, brick yeah. by James. He's probably been on the bench a little bit too long. As Kenny trying to go physical, gets another lay in. Now Kenny just trying to take this game over by himself from the Dreamers. And, you know, if he's not getting help from anyone else, then might as well take it yourself. Byron Mullins with a close miss. Kind of the only one, this time with the screen, off of the float. And a team rebound by the Kings, a chance to run. Dreamers do get back, but Big Sushi, he blows the close one. And now it's numbers for the Dreamers. But mistake in transition and a lack of focus there. And now frustration going on as looks like Jeff Wu will get a little bit of a Smiling warning for that after the out-of-bounds three-point attempt, which made the referees go chase after it. Yeah, I mean, he shot way over the basket and then cut up a lot of time, so, um, you know, maybe trying to get a little extra shot up before he goes to the bench. Mullen screening for Joe, who's got McCullough on him, but left wide open to quick fire three. A little too long. Kenny probing for space back to Gilbeck and some odd spacing. Left alone from the left corner is try no. You know, the Dreamers getting a lot of easier sec uh, easier shots here in the second quarter, but you know that Vilco percentage still fairly low. Um, you know, they just gotta make some shots to cut this gap down. Kenny Manigal doesn't miss and continues to add to the Kings lead, albeit a little bit slower in the second quarter, but there's another timeout. This time again called by the Dreamers in a big hole in game one. We'll be going to break back after this. Mama 新北光拿的New台北Queens一起呢 The New Taipei Kings up big against the Dreamers in the first playoff game of the Plus League this season 
Now, they did tie the Braves with the best home record at 14 wins and six losses, but the Kings also this year own the best road record at 13 and seven. So that's even more bad news if you're on the Dreamer side, but starting the game off on a slow note, and it seems like whichever personnel they've got on the floor, it has not exactly worked as CEO of the league, Charles Chen, is speaking to an executive with the uh, Hong Kong Eastern Basketball Club. Yeah, we'll see if the Dreamers can come out here a little stronger in the after this timeout in the second quarter. You know, they they were doing a lot of high pick and rolls in the and getting a lot of open shots, but you know they just can't get hit. They can't get any of those shots to fall, unfortunately. Um, but let's see if they can space the floor and try to maybe get a switch here. They were looking McCullough's way then and look off a bit. So Gilbeck will try the jumper from the free throw line. Not the most ideal as Jay Chen in for the first time guarding Joseph. He tries to force it and Gilbeck with the board. Definitely if the Dreamers can get something quickly in transition, that'll be good. There's a first. Luka on that with the lay-in. You know, you ask and you shall receive, Ryan. And, uh, you know, the Dreamers found an open cutter back. And, you know, nice pass to get that layup there on that fast break. Now the Dreamers showing kind of a zone of look, but Amigo breaks it with a mid-range jumper. That was a tough shot. That was great defense by the Dreamers, but, you know, good offense beats Good defense, and in that case, you know, there's nothing you can do on that one. Jay Chen, though, the microwave effect that he has, first shot three, he's had a pretty solid season despite only playing in 23 other games. 6.2 points per game as Kenny Manigal, I don't know if he called bank, but it almost went in off glass. Oh, it's Jay Chen trying to back down Joseph. Picked up his dribble early as Sushi was about to handle it. McCullough will get a foul out of it, but right now all he's doing is some frustration ISOs and it's not getting the best results. He gets a foul there. You know, that's one thing when you're down on 21 points early is, you know, the Dreamers probably have it in their head. They need some quick baskets uh, to try to cut down this lead and, you know, taking some tough shots and taking very quick shots often leads to misses, as, as we've seen from McCullough early. A lot of early shots in the possession that either break down or didn't go in and just gave it up for the Kings to go the other way. That free throw was missed to the, the delight of the home fans. He made his debut against the uh, Kings here in Xingzhuang, 16 points, 13 rebounds. But minus 26, he did much better at home against the Kings the next time they played each other on March 24th. 23 and 23, but plus 15. Yeah, lots of volatility there between those two games. And, you know, when you're playing in the playoffs, you can't have that much volatility. You gotta stay stable. You gotta play at your highest peak, or else your season can be over in just these three games. But he's out for Derek. As they find Mullins, a quick turnaround hook. Kenny guarded by Amigo. This time James having to guard Doway on the post. They can't play it cleanly, the refs say, and it's another foul on number 17. Good effort, but there was something illegal the refs saw. And the look, the spin move created the advantage and a little too many taps on the elbow. Yeah, a little hit on the elbow on the way up. Definitely some contact there, enough to call a foul. And, you know, we've seen the Dreamers get to the free throw line a lot more in the second quarter, but the problem is the free throw shooting isn't as well as it needs to be in order to come back as we see this first free throw miss. Only one for two. The Dreamers in the regular season, 63% from the line is is fifth in the league. 
Gilbeck in the right spot, guarding, again, the middle of the uh, Dreamers defense, kind of simple or like from the last year's line year squad is Byron Mullins, the high difficult turnaround. And uh, number five is finally on the scoreboard. Yeah, like you mentioned, Ryan, with Gilbeck being down low, just kind of roaming around down in the post. That that actually leads to a lot of a lot of mismatches in terms of you know the three-point line. Someone's going to be open on the three-point line, and we're, we're seeing the teams take advantage of that from multiple players, not just only you know, the three-point shooters, but even James as well. As uh, you know, with Gilbeck being down low, he's, he's got a lot of open three shots in this game. Screens for Amigo, who ties the three short, one bounce, and a no. Look the other way, no look at the Gilbert, but blocked by the rim. Miscalculated there. And a chance to go the other way, and now the Kings throw it out of bounds. Well, Gilbert had what probably is the dunk of the year in the Steelers game, but was a little bit too ambitious here. Seems like it got caught a little bit on the wrist area, didn't get it fully extended in. You know, that was a tough fall as well, but uh, he was well above the rim, just couldn't get the ball up there to, to flush it in. But he's good to go as the uh, Kings still in their man defense. In fact, their starting lineup. The way might have played the smarts on Big Sushi there, and it looks like that'll be his third foul on the quarter. And yeah, we're seeing some contact. But, you know, it's a game, a physical game so far. And even, you know, a little bit of potential flopping or a little bit of acting definitely helps sell the call. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it was flopping, but, you know, getting every foul count. Go away, strip by Manigal. Another turnover. Missed opportunity more so as Joe, one on one on Gilbeck, fires away. It's all a mismatch there. Uh, somebody better get back to help Joseph. Yeah. Well, they whistle on both first. ends of the court. Uh, on both ends of the court. That's where the Dreamers are in one of their best modes when Gilbeck gets to kind of clear some space in the transition. They are. There's example number one, just a quick take foul. After Manigal stripped Gilbeck on the previous possession as Doe will head to the bench. A lot of mileage on his body as the Kings now asking for a timeout with three minutes to go. Already at the half century mark, they're scoring and holding the Dreamers to 29. Now, that wouldn't be the lowest mark in Plus League's halftime score. You know, with three, three minutes to go left, that's plenty of time to play the game. And you know, what the Dreamers are looking for is to get some more momentum going into the end of this half that they can bring into the, the second half. But the Kings are looking to just play fast and you know, play strong and try to shut them down early. On screen now is a graph of on the x-axis, average scoring with Byron Mullins all the way on the right. And then top and bottom is plus minus. So that graph mostly populated by new type A Kings players. You say these are the main rotational guys who there's a few more of them on this year's King squad, whereas the Dreamers want to still be that defensive first team that they are. They're led by Achi in the points per game department. The low in halftime scoring, I just looked it up, was the Pilots, only 24 points in the first half of game four against the Dreamers. They're going to need that kind of effort in the second half if we're starting to look ahead to things. But the Kings definitely had their detractors about not playing as full-hearted as they could in the later stretches of the season. But right now we're seeing the uh, results on the floor, at least in game one. They've been matching up on the defensive end, and they've been giving a very strong effort running down in their fast break attempts. Meanwhile, the Dreamers are right now playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, as you pointed out. 
Yeah, it's a five-man game. I mean, you got five players on your team for a reason, and you can't win 1v1 against uh, the entire team. And the Dreamers are going to have to play some more team ball if they're going to bring this back in the second half. Well, the free throw story is still a major problem as from the supporters in the upper levels for the Dreamers. The blue look on their face as Gilbeck does make the adjustment. They are so far only a six for 11. Meanwhile, the Kings could be a little better at six for nine. Amigo getting the down screen, but Kenny jumps it. So they'll have to take it out of the sideline. Doboy's have him guarding and Kenny Manigal on the inbounds. Interesting cross match up there. Amigo this time on the cross screen, fakes up and a pretty lay-in. You know, just that patience right there, that little pump fake at the end. Uh, got him enough space to finish at the rim, fairly uncontested. Gilbeck misses the close one. It was a great opportunity. Amigo with that last bucket is the first king to score in double digits, if you can believe it. Pyle, hot early. Well, that one's in and out. Giving space for Kenny. He'll try from three, and that one's a swish. You know, even though it's coming down to the end of the half, both teams still got to play hard. As Amigo, another bucket around the rim. He's been very active. You know, like we said, Ryan talked about early, a lot of question marks about his minutes played and points per game in this playoffs. But it looks like he's uh, definitely putting up those points per game and definitely increasing from his uh, season average so far. And it's only halftime as well. On the other side, Achi with two points on his half commits a travel there. Found a teeny bit of room, but not clean footwork, the referees say. Yeah, shuffled his feet there a little bit, took a little extra step off that pivot, and called for that travel. Manigal rejects the screen, but it looks like Kenny took a little bit of a tumble instead of a proper dive. Yeah, grazed his arm uh, right as he went over it and just went out of bounds as you have a sub. Jeff Wu will come in for Kenny as Dreamer's bench probably sense his fatigue. Now the foul situation on the quarter is flipped, so that's good news if you're the Dreamers. Playing defense relatively cleanly. The Kings, most of their fouls on number 17, Big Sushi. But it's not exactly helped enough on the scoring department as Mullins get a touch on the block. Again with a fadeaway way off the mark. Now we're seeing Mullins struggling on the offensive end, and he's been a little slow on the defensive end as well, as we see uh, offensive, foul, uh, yeah, offensive foul there by Gilbeck on a pretty hard screen on Joseph Lynn. You know, he's grabbing his jaw a little bit, as we'll see. Didn't exactly get set there. The referee was right on top of it. Yeah, you definitely got to communicate. Uh, Joseph's, uh, Joseph's teammates definitely got to communicate on that, tell him the screen's coming on his left side, uh, you know, with a big guy like that. But it's very, on the other side, it's Aji who got started a little early as Amigo no good with that three. They missed Gilbeck down low. But Joe. Showing a little mercy there, picks it and leaves it for Aji. He's making a move. A little driving kick to Gilbeck, but no. Aji with the board out to Ryan. First open three in a while, finally rails it. That was good patience there off that offensive rebound. Like I've been mentioning, these offensive rebounds are turning into points. Uh, whether, the, whether that be like a quick hook back or a uh, open three on the, the swing on the wing. You got a rebound if you want to win the game. A no looking hook pass, but Lee Kayan will throw it out of bounds while he lays out of bounds. That is Lu Kuan Yang's first made three on the game, and the Dreamers only four for 16 on the half. There you see, trying to do it in reverse. Looking to pass, then looking to shoot, then passing. The, need to recalibrate on that move. Yeah, that's tough. No Gilbeck's presence down at the post made him second guess. 
your shot. Hey, Manigal has to foul from the side as Gilbeck had an open look. Yeah, like you mentioned, Ryan, the fouls have reversed in the second quarter, but it all comes down to making free throws. I mean, you can get all the free throws you want, but if you don't make them, then you know, your points aren't added to the board. And talk about foul trouble for both teams. It's only Kenny Manigold second. The only player with three is the aforementioned Su Su Shin. As Gilbeck again misses the first one. The Dreamers bench looks on. There's Ilkan Potaman in the black shirt sitting down. Gilbeck can't make a second. Less than a second differential on the shot clock and game clock in their second half. So we'll see the Kings just hold it out to the end and make sure the Dreamers can't get another chance at a bucket. It's Joseph waiting for the Mullen screen. And they call an early foul as several players did not hear the whistle. Yeah, with the crowd as loud as it, as it is, you know, along with the music, it doesn't help it as much if these whistles aren't being blown loudly. As, uh, you know, could have potentially caused an injury there as, uh, you know, players still playing at full force, you know, the whistle has been blown. Now, take a look at that. That's Achi's third personal, so he's out for Kenny Chen as the Dreamers try to bring on defense. 4.6 to guard. Amigo back door, but a little bit too deep. Ryan Steve, at least put it on target. Maybe a missed opportunity, but the Kings with the uh, 54 to 37 lead heading into halftime. It's game one of the Plus League playoffs. We'll be back after this. Hello,弟弟,来来来来,来到我们中间,中间,然后求给我们这一位。好,我们呢,来来来,四位球迷朋友们,我会跟你们讲解我们的游戏规则,游戏规则,哦,我在你们这边啊,我在这啊。是,我
下一位朋友上前。哇，这个压力山大了，至少要超过六球。好，我们可以投出了，第一球。Welcome to halftime. We are here in the Shingon Gymnasium, home of the New Taipei Kings, who lead in the game. It's Aaron Yangtze and Eddie Zhang Yangzhong on the Mandarin broadcast. Show me, boys and girls, all my basketball. So, we're going to in Ivy Park, share English with you. 教你的篮球的英文术语，搭配 Plus 的影片，打造全新的线上课程。欢迎大家在新云南点结，一起学习。There's the combined team statistics where the biggest standout for us is the shooting percentage, especially on the dreamer side. Only less than 30% from the field and only four for 16 from three. Their rebounding, especially on the offensive side, is what's even gotten them to their 37 points. But the bottom of column is turnovers. But the real big thing is they only have one steal on the game. I wonder if that's an area where they might get more aggressive in the second half, trying to pressure the uh, Kings guards a little bit more on the perimeter. They do rotate more players on the game. Ten have made it on the floor to only nine by the uh, Kings. A little bit of a reversal of their rotations we think of at the end of the regular season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if the Dreamers need to come back, they're going to have to take some quick shots, uh, quick and easy shots. You Knows what they want to take and pressuring on the defense very early and potentially getting some more steals. I know they only have one steal um, on, the, on the stats list currently, and they got to push the ball more get those easy baskets to cut that lead. I mean, the lead is pretty sizable at the moment, but it's definitely not come back at all. They're just gonna have to come out hot and fast here in the second half to give them a chance to win this ball game. One thing that the Kings, though, aren't doing very well on the other side is creating the opportunities to drive to the basket and find an assist afterwards, because Brandon Gilbeck, of course, leading the league in block shots, but he's kind of right now in the middle of the dreamer zone, and the Kings are finding Cutter's back door. They're rotating the ball out for a three-point shots on the outside, so right now their offense, at least in the half court, has looked really solid. Yeah, I would say the Kings definitely are relying heavily on threes at the moment, and they're shooting it very well. They're getting a lot of open shots, not only around mid-range, but the three-point line, as we've seen. And, you know, if you get too reliant on those threes, and you start taking too many, and you're not shooting as well as you did in the first half, then that can lead to a lot of long rebounds for the Dreamers. You can push the ball, so... You know, if the Kings keep shooting hot, I don't, I don't see how they can lose this game, but, you know, the, the, this game is all about runs, and the Kings are on a hot run this first half, and the Dreamers are going to have to have a hot run in the second half in order to win this game. They haven't even got Byron Mullins going so much, but he might be able to in the second half. We'll go to another break. Back after this. Dee非常厉害，恭喜呢这位弟弟可以获得杨敬敏2021年到2022年MVP摇头公仔，加上杨敬敏MVP签名纪念框，MVP组合，大家赶快一边掌声！非常感谢四位的参与，谢谢你们
是嘉怡，欢迎来到季后赛的第一场比赛，就在新北国王的主场，热烈的点燃战火。那今天呢，进场的前五百名的粉丝会获得这一张，是不是很明显？就是新北国王对上是梦想家的捕梦王啦。但不管你是哪队球迷，精彩比赛一定要锁定。那马上来欢迎的是我们新北国王的行销经理 Roger。在这样的商店里面哦，其实可以看到 Roger 今天的配色非常的特别，是不是来介绍一下？这可是在季后赛才会推出的商品哦。呃，对，没错，这个是我们全新季后赛系列，叫做灰黄系列。那就这也玩一个谐音的梗啦，就是灰色跟黄色。那这个灰黄系列也是想要代表说，我们即将要踏上我们的辉煌之路。开启我们在季后赛的夹击，没有错，新美国王的辉煌战绩。那另外呢，这一次很特别的是，他们季后赛的口号就是 “We ready, We ready”。其实呢，七个字也代表他们距离拿下总冠军是有七场的胜利。而另外这一件很特别的是球员专属的练习球衣，材质非常的棒，大家其实也可以哇，其实实际的来体验一下。那此外呢，其实在这个商城里面还有一个是很值得大家推荐的是什么呢？哎，这是在这边可以看到，我们这边有一个 Kings 的迷你篮板跟迷你篮球。那这个其实，在我们例行赛的时候有推出，也非常热售。所以我们就是因为球迷子敲碗，我们重新出了一个新的设计的迷你篮板跟迷你球。那希望大家可以在家里打打球，然后继续享受篮球的热情。对，没有错，在场上看球，回到家小朋友还可以投投篮。但是当然，季后赛商品不止这些喽。季后赛商品怎么可以少了球衣呢 r a j o 是不是在设计上有一些特殊可以介绍给大家的？对，因为这是我们的辉煌系列嘛，那我们玩那个谐音的梗灰，其实就是象征那个禁卫军他们穿在身上的盔甲，然后穿着盔甲去打战的意思。哇、wow, ，所以呢，你只要穿上了球衣，有灰色的盔甲，那黄色当然是代表皇家的黄色。对，毕竟因为我们是国王嘛，那就是我们的皇冠的颜色，所以这个主色系一定不能少。好，那另外来到了现场，其实刚才有很多人在排队，想要所处的专属服务是什么？呃，我们这边其实有一个现场刻字化球衣烫印的服务。那这边你可以看到有很多的球员的号码，你可以去刻字化自己最喜欢的球员的背号跟他们的名字，这样你不一定要一定要带敏哥的球衣走。哇、wow, ，Roger， 你们的行销真的是非常的贴心。当然也希望大家哦，可以在呃比赛的空档或者在赛前来逛逛商品部。那当然，接下来我们就要将焦点回到比赛场上。可以跟我们的镜头挥个手，两家一家亲啊，可以啊！不管是哪一队的球迷，好不好？只要是支持篮球的，支持我们台湾篮球的，都是好球迷。Hello， 国王的粉丝们 ，Hello， 欢迎来到我们的现场。哎呀，我们的球迷都已经开始跳舞了，非常好。如果喜欢我们的音乐的话，那播放我们音乐的是我们的灵魂人物 DJ 上。大家如果喜欢他的音乐，也可以搜寻他的 IG DJ 上 Having Fun。没错，就是你，你已经上电视了啊！可以跟我们的球迷朋友们挥个手，就是 MVP。Let's ride。王明就是第三羊，没错没错。好，是我们苏伟的粉丝跟我们的镜头前面挥挥手，好吗？哈哈哈哈哈。Hello。Hello， 欢迎来到我们的现场。Hello， 朋友，对对对对，就是你，你已经上去了，来跟我们的镜头挥挥手吗
就发表，只想让我开着我的 SUV， 前面两个后面三个都是我的好兄弟。Hello， 是我们的小小 Queens 们。Hello， 给我们的镜头打个招呼，马挥个手。Hello。我很乱的都是因为勤奋，管理时尚习惯不能停顿，没有心思理会那些评论，标准目标忽略设想，为了猎物精准。Hello， 欢迎来到我们新锐国王的主场，欢迎你们的到来。Hello， 我是马克龙，欢迎来到我们的主场。Commentating for what we label A G one of the playoffs, the first game of the A series, as you see some of Rakuten Monkeys players in the building. Tomorrow is game one of the Braves Pilot Series. That'll take place at 5 p.m. in a hoping a gymnasium. Well, a 54 to 37. First half for the Kings puts him in the driver's seat. It does not match the uh, Kings' record halftime score, though, of 63 points in Game Three. Second half against the uh, Lioners as Kenny gets us started with a missed floater. And yeah, we'll see the Kings try to assert as much pressure as they did at the beginning of this game, as they had a quick 8-0 run. Um, for the first eight points of the game, so we'll see them try to go on an early run here in this second half. Amigo going one-on-one -on -one against Kenny, but forced into a tough turnaround. A close miss, though. They changed starting lineup-wise. Doug Creighton in for Ryan Lu Guanliang. Go back, the elbow extended. Hand out to McCullough, and a slip pass to an easy two-handed slam. By Big B. Now we see Gilbeck just slip on that on that ball screen and rose up with two hands, made sure to put it down this time and didn't want to get rim stuff again like he did on that previous dunk attempt. Nigo picks up the dribble over to Big Sushi. Weird dribble and drive. As Amigo floats it up wildly, trying to get a foul out of the play, and there's McCullough. Now for to Kenny, clutching but missing as a few players go down. Amigo left behind, gets his two points on the cherry pick. Not exactly a good trade off if you're the Dreamers. Yeah, that's the type of situation that the Germans do want. As uh, they did have a five on four possession, as Amigo was just hanging out on the other side, just waiting for that cherry pick. But had two chances to convert it off that offensive rebound, but had it stripped away by Manigold with a quick hand. Manigold going one-on-one -on -one against Doug. Goes the gap, now gave a step. Here's uh, Byron Mullins, no, with the first three. As we mentioned, only uh, one field goal made, so maybe we can see more Byron Mullins in the second half, but screened off as Chris McCullough rattles in the three. Finally, that one in rhythm. Exactly what the Dreamers are looking for. They've been pushing the ball every possession they've had it, and passing the ball, moving the ball very well. They finally realize it's a team game, and passing the ball, creating space for open shots and a lot of easier shots than they were getting in the first half. Manigal can't get the answer as Byron Mullen, they say, foul on the uh, boxing out effort. It's going to be on McCullough, second personal. Didn't know to look at the tough match, but he was holding, so it was a good catch by the crew chief. A little bit of cross matchup. So, Brandon Gilbeck guarding Si Xuan. Probably in there to try to help out. Go on the handoff, trying to out muscle Hayden. But a jump pass as Big Sushi. And another foul will pull on Byron Mullins. There's some frustration on the Dreamers bench for sure. But we got to check the tape to see if it was a clean blockout or not. 
and then look, pushing from behind, it was slight, but it wasn't no contact down there. Now, Byron Mellon's doing a great job of just finding space and blocking out, doing his job, and oh, half away for the uh, tip away and the two-handed dunk for Chris McCullough to exact a teeny bit of revenge. On the main plane, Ryan, we were talking about at halftime was the Dreamers need to get up on defense and play some more aggressive defense, take a little bit more chances, more calculated chances. As Amigo this time with a rare drive all the way to the hoop. And they're definitely doing that. Uh, as we see a couple of, uh, you know, maybe a quick shot there, but we've seen them take a lot of more chances defensively, grabbing a lot more steals and pushing the pace a lot more than they did in the first half. Any many goals. Pretty much right through Brandon Gilbeck, who's struggling to get up forward, and in fact, he's got a limp. The Dreamers don't notice and cough it up. Gilbeck's hanging in there, but right down the middle as Byron slips through up behind and scores. And now the referees grant the Dreamers a substitution. And those are the kind of two possession swings that happen so often on the game as Gilbeck finally convinced to head to the bench. There you see McCullough allowing dribble drive and then Mullins knowing the Dreamers are out of position. Momentum can be created very quickly and a lot of higher energy plays like this one with the dunk um, does bring the crowd back into it and gives the players a lot of energy as well and having Gilbeck come out is, is not something you want to see from the Dreamers, is his defensive presence down low. Caused a lot of issues for, for the Kings. On the other side, it's Big Sushi with his fourth foul, trying to block out McCullough this side. Kenny Manigal was in there for support. Kind of just more so unlucky as Kenny with the air ball layup and McCullough overshoots everything. The Dreamers are lucky to hang on, but thankfully they don't count the quality of your misses, but it's two misses in a row for the Dreamers. As Doway knocks down the two-pointer. Torrey kind of run stopper there. Down low to Mullins, he's got position and the easy baby hook. I was seeing Mullins being a lot more present on the offensive end in this second half, and you know, now it seems like he's got a, a lot better matchup down in the post now that Gilbeck is gone. And McCullough trying to fade away. Long rebound eventually tracked down by Amigo. They want to keep pushing it ahead with the numbers. Joe Lynn launches too strong. Now it's the Dreamers too careless. Derek trying to go across the face of Kenny Manigal, who gets the assist to Big Sushi. And yet again, possession swings in the favor of the Kings. That's the power of the steal. Uh, you know, usually once off a steal, you're out of position, and the Kings come off the position there with that quick push, push up the floor, and it's direction on that pass. Derek to Kenny, who tries the high arcing rainbow. They gotta convert on these as another miss as Big Sushi fouled by Derek. Not enough, clean, not clean enough, I should say, on the contest with the body. And the quality of the defense the Dreamers have been putting forth throughout this game has definitely been lackluster as, as that's just too easy of a penetration. No one picked up the ball. And that gave you know, Manigal plenty of time to draw the extra defender to drop off a pass. It's a 20-point lead as we head our first break of the second half. We have Kings, Kings, and Kings, Kings, 
再强不放，会被撞到地上。哇，今天真的太多人了！欢迎我们外国的朋友一起来我们球场。我来了，来了，来了。等一下，还有，等一下，还有，等一下，还有。Welcome back from your break. You're just joining us in the second half. It's maybe only a 12 to 9 a Kings run, but talk, think about the quality of what's going on in the floor. Just like in the first half, the Kings are finding their opportunities when they run the break. Maybe for the Kings, unfortunate, but Kenny Manigal, second in the league and assisted at about six per game. He's really the energizer guy, getting the rebounds, getting the stops on one end and pushing at the other end. Big Sushi with a couple free throws coming up, getting the easy opportunities that he converted on in the first quarter, then came out shooting cold in the second quarter. But that's a great way to get a youngster into the flow of the offense, as you see the, some scenic shots of the crowd and some of the suits in here, including Charles Chen and uh, James Mao for the Kings. As Amigo, quick out of the out of bounds, another score. So no free throws, excuse me, but two points anyways. This time on make by the Dreamers, Doug Creighton, finally getting involved. But by my count, that's the second time baseline out of bounds, Amigo got free. Pretty inexplicable by the Dreamers. Now he's posting up, move on down. Going to a middle move. Probably could have got contact on that one. A little tough stop there, but you know, he's just showing his versatility, being able to score on both ends of the floor. Uh, not only from the three-point range, but backing it down for the, the two, the little jumpers. In and out, but Big Sushi's in there and he will at least get a foul out of this trip. Kind of bailing out Amigo, missing the open three. The Kings had a five on three going, but they do get something out of the possession. Yeah, the Dreamers, just no one blocking out there and then finding James on that, on that rebound attempt. And you know, the only thing they could do there was either let him score an easy basket or foul him. So. We're gonna make them earn it from the line here. First one made from the uh, charity stripe. Our update is, thankfully, uh, Gilbeck, maybe just a little stinger. He's back out on the floor. Definitely good to see from the Dreamers. He does get a lot of energy on the defensive end. And just his long arms and defensive presence. It turns a lot of uh, a lot of takes to the basket when you see a guy there. Q fresh in the game. Looks like he'll be called for a holding foul. There you see what the referee saw in T. Davis had two hands involved in that defensive possession. Yeah, just hugging him a little bit. Just letting his presence be known. Now giving him a step. As Aji giving a little space over Doug. Hit one earlier, but the low line drive is in and out. And again, Manigal with a headband back on. As the Kings have one of their bigger lineups with Amigo at shooting guard. We went down again on the block. To Q from a step beyond the three point arc. It's in. Yeah, we've seen Quincy Davis hit that shot in the first half, and you know, with Amigo threatening that mismatch, brought Gil back down just enough to give Davis that open shot. Down to Derek. He'll try the fade away and got to go. Lee Doe has had a pretty decent scoring game. Taking advantage of his opportunities. Yeah, every minute counts when you're on the floor. Might as well make the most of it. They're going on Luba now again, and bonus as Kenny Manigold gets the score. Uh, Manigold had his biceps out, just flexing on him, showing him he's too strong. And yeah, that's a tough, tough position to guard with a guy of his strength coming at you. 
This time it's Aji on the help. He did get two hands in there and a fourth personal on number 11, not really worth it. Trying to dig down on Kenny Manigault as the Dreamers right now have to keep on sending help with Lu Guanyang's way and it's burning them. I don't know if it's very nice for Coach Ryan to be going at Dreamers Ryan on that end of the floor as Aji hook pass to Jeff. Too strong with a three as Kenny Manigold and Byron Mullins at the tag team on that rebound. Well, the Dreamers gotta be looking for stops here. Can't give up any easy points on the offensive end. Little rolling play as Q lines up a three and long rebound right to Joe. Quick by a three and it's in. That hit. And it's now a 29 point lead. Everything's going to King's way this moment as back door as Gilbeck. Let's see if they count it. The whistles came pretty quick. It will. But previously, you see Joseph Lin almost out of rhythm, but sometimes they'll create even more rhythm as you see the foul down low. Byron Mullins will get checked out again. That's only his first personal according to the scoreboard here in the arena. So he and Amigo getting some relatively early rest. As you know, the Kings like to play their starters the entire third. The time, but Gilbeck short with a free throw. You know, unfortunately for the Dreamers, even after they switch sides of the half, they, they have the home crowd have all those uh, distraction doodle things that they have, and not helping their free throw percentage. Kicks going a little smaller, but Kenny Manigal hits from the outside. They were over earlier, and now almost get away with. A steal in transition, but they say they foul on the pass. You know, we talked about if the Kings are able to keep the high shooting percentage up, both on the two point percentages as well as the three point, more likely uh, it's going to be a tough team to beat with such a deficit they have on their hands and just threw it away there on that inbound play. But Kenny Manigal putting the pressure on. Maybe a little bit of eyes on his own part. A little heat check there with all the momentum the Kings have had so far. Good yeah. hands and McCullough right into the trap. They're going the other way to the ooh, but Gilbeck's there for the block. Incredible defensive effort as Luke now open on the other way, and it's a little five-point exchange for the Dreamers for once. Yeah, that's exactly the type of play that the Dreamers need to bring up that energy and making sure they're putting the ball in the basket, giving it everything they have on both ends of the court. Joseph Lynn can't get the answer as now it's the Dreamers' turn to go in transition. But Jeff, a little bit too careless, he throws it away and looks like Gilbeck poked to the face of Quincy Davis. I don't know if the referees will review it. They certainly are on the grounds to review this call. They could say it's just incidental, but it certainly looks a little dangerous to us. A little dangerous, but I don't think it was on purpose. Yeah. A little continuation trying to reach for that ball. It just so happens. You know, Davis's face <laughs> is in the way, but we'll, we'll see what the, the referees have to say. Right now, all three of them spread out wide, and they'll just say a common foul, but the Kings probably more so happy that Davis is good to go, stepping up to the free throw line now. So far this game, the Kings are shooting a lot better from the free throw line than the Dreamers, so let's see if they can extend their lead as Davis knocks down the first free throw. You know, these give me points, gotta make them to win this ball game. And you know, there's two for two right there. He looked even better that time on the trip. 
With two minutes to go, the Kings have already had 30 points on the quarter. As Byron Mullins coming in for the injured cue. Kenny Manigal kind of left and right sides trying to guard McCullough there on the entry pass. Got a hand on it. There will be a foul as he really just completely stole, completely picked McCullough on a previous trip. Guessing correctly, and this time that additional effort almost got him in trouble more so than the previous time. Yeah, Manigold has some quick hands, and we see on that uh, turnaround by McCullough kind of strip him really early and just missed a little bit, caught him on the arm and the free throws. But the story continues missing free throws, and can't miss them. These are easy points, give me points. for two trip. Gilbeck almost had the offensive rebound. But that now makes it seven for 15 on the night. McCullough only a 64% free throw shooter during the regular season in eight games as Kyle lines up a three and a perfect all net swish. point lead as Aji commits a travel goal going backwards the second of the game not even getting a chance to get in rhythm still only has two points in the four fouls took that left foot as the pivot and took it back and the referees really gave him the benefit of that switch pivot foot as with no looking back to Mullins with a twisting slam making his presence known inside the paint this game. Uh, I think that's the third dunk, if I'm not mistaken. And we see another dunk back to back by Gilbeck, but just Joseph's ability to draw two players to him off that pick and roll gives Mullins a wide open space in the paint for that dunk. The Dreamers take it away. And with a little two for one opportunity, Jeff Rule attack from about 16 feet in a perfect swish. Seems like the Dreamers offense is picking up a little bit, but the problem is they're not playing defense. They're pretty much staying even with the Kings here on this deficit, as the Kings are getting a lot of open baskets as well, so you gotta have stops and baskets if you're the Dreamers, but as long as the Kings can keep, keep scoring, you know, they can stay at maintenance on this deficit. Mullins will line it up, but it's a miss. With four seconds left, Aji to Gilbert to beat the clock. A little bit of a stunner to end the uh, third quarter as the Dreamers continue to see their deficit in game one increase as the Kings look to secure game one of the series after this. Sensei 我們可以沒錯兩個B就代表一個W yeah, why you know I don't want to share Come on, baby, just pump it. Pump it. Hello. Oh, we can't come to the end of the year. Easy beats with the gun. Suddenly the top. Yeah, yeah. 
好了，两位美女，我们一起比出这个胜利的代表，代表我们今天要拿下我们季后赛的第一场胜利。Five thousand five hundred and thirty-eight. The announced crowd for the Kings opening up the playoffs at home. They've increased the lead to uh, twenty-eight as we head to the fourth and final frame. by the Kings trying to get JJ open. Now Venti will call a reset. The JJ left open mercifully as Quincy Davis comes down with the board. It's Kenny Manigold and Chris McCullough, the imports for their respective teams. Driving kick to Kyle, his three. It's a close miss. This fourth quarter, the Dreamers definitely have to take some more chances to cut this deficit and try to get the lead. And you know, they are being patient on offense, which is would be nice normally, but they need some quick shots, and a lot of them to come back in this game. McCullough tries to go with power on the offensive rebound and will get the foul out of the Kings. But I don't know, uh, the, the way long two is exactly what they had in mind. There you see in the middle of Manny Galton Davis. Kind of a part swipe foul, part trip foul going on. Kenny Manigal for personal. I sure think the Dreamers wouldn't mind if they could get him in foul trouble. As McCullough continues to struggle from the line. A little frustration on his face, as we can see with that missed free throw. But you know, you can't let that miss get to your head. And all the previous free throw misses, you just gotta focus on the now and try to hit that next one as, as you did there. Well, we're broadcasters, so we can focus on the pass. He was 12 for 15 in the game against the Steelers to help him on the way to 28 points as Venti from way beyond the arc as Davis. Picks up the loose ball to Manny Gall, who doesn't miss. And just like that, the Dreamers calling timeout as this lineup has not worked in a, just about a minute, six seconds. So our final commercial break of the broadcast, and we'll be back to Dreamers at the Kings. New Taipei Queens. 谢谢一直为我们新北国应援的新北国王拉队。大家可以跟着我们在场边的新北国王拉队一起 make some noise， 一起为我们新北国王加油应援，跟着节奏一起敲打。Cut, cut, 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 cut. The new Taipei Queens conclude their last performance of the evening as we show you again tomorrow's matchup between the uh, Taoyuan and Puyuan Pilots and the uh, Taipei Fuvang Braves. First game of that series. The Pilots missing out last year's playoffs as the uh, sixth place team and climbing up all the way to third and the uh, Braves going from uh, third place to second place last season to this season but here in Xingzhuang, it's the uh, Kings in solid control of the game. They're running the same half-court set every time down. And while the Dreamers block the first action, they don't stay matched up to shooters and pay for it as McCullough trying to go with power and get another foul out of it. But uh, if he doesn't score the basket, he's really 
a negative play for the Dreamers so far. Um, you know, that last play there probably cost them about five to ten seconds, which is exactly what they're looking for, but you know, that's probably a basket that McCullough should have finished. And, but even if he hits these free throws, that's two points in about ten seconds, and that's exactly the type of pace that the Dreamers are looking for in this final ten minutes and 41 seconds. Only a one for two trip as Manny Gall comes down with the board. Manny Gall on the post up as JJ gets it back to him. He tries from three and Doe pokes it to Kenny. So a score and a stop. Here come the Dreamers once again, Doug. Color down low with the mismatch, and this time he's got the soft touch. A little miscommunication there. Almost to travel as well, but able to keep his pivot foot down and get the ball off in time. As the Kings here. are small right now, so Doe starting Lee Kai Yin, who tries for three. Forcing another miss. Chris to Doug on the move, the three on the way, but Plank. And again, McCullough showing off the big moves. He's picked up somewhere down the line. Really the only scoring spot for the Dreamers in the fourth quarter. Now we've seen the team be very patient if they can just to you know, eat up some of that clock, but on a turnover right there, that's exactly what you don't want. Oh, one extra step from McCullough as that quick pressure by Venti there. Venti, yeah, exactly. You know, the threat of that steal right there. One, two, three. Would have been impressive, but... Not long it? enough stride to get there in two steps, unfortunately. But Kenny Manigault going to the cup and getting the bounce. So finally an answer by the Kings. Yeah, the Dreamers are moving the ball fairly well. And Derek tried to slam it back in, but Kenny kind of cramped up on the uh, other baseline as JJ free for three. But another miss by the Kings has pulled down quite a bit. Referee stopping the Dreamers break, but giving Kenny Chen the chance to hustle back to the bench. And clearly the Dreamers not all that ready to get a sub in. Getting a look at the last play. Kind of a funny cramp up and partial collide with Davis there. We've seen a lot of Dreamers get injured throughout this game and have to sit out for a little bit. So we'll keep tabs on Kenny to make sure everything works out and he stays healthy. Right now, I'm waiting on the doorway screen. Former Ulong teammates. As Jeff Wu clutching in the air and almost got it. But it's a miss and the Dreamers, a second chance on the uh, Kings poking it out of bounds. Even after that, shot goes up. Uh, great hang time, but just missed that second effort on that. Gives him another chance at a shot there. So he returns the uh, miss three with his own. And now Manigal's trying to get in with the effort, and that's where, funny enough, the offense has sometimes an advantage when you squeeze between two. Defenders. It works in football, American football, or I guess association football as well. When you try to squeeze in between two, you sometimes get that advantage, even though it looks like a one on two. The foul's going to be on Doe, his second personal. Yeah, Manigault is very quick and great body control there. Makes sure to stretch out his two steps, and get as much space and hang time as he can, and he's able to draw the foul with the crying hands of the two defenders on him. A missed free throw as we look at the Dreamers bench. Not a lot of life there. A made second as 
on the game. Manny Galte got a game high 23 points. Jeff Wu dribbling into trouble and throwing it in Kyle. Again, an easy turnover. Denti trying the three, but rattles it out. Again, it's just the Chris McCullough show every time down the floor. Now you just got to prove it at the free throw line, right? It's the next step. Well, that's one area, I guess two areas we could point out for the Kings. They're shooting in this fourth quarter has gone completely cold, one for eight. And they have not been able to stop the Dreamers on the fast break. As the referees are gonna have a little bit of conference, maybe about who committed the foul there. We double check, it's gonna be on uh, JJ. As Manny Golf will go off for Big Sushi and the Kings are all locals now. The Kings lucky enough to build such a lead in these first three quarters to where if they're shooting cold here in the fourth, it won't impact them as much as it would if it was a closer game. But you know, the Dreamers definitely seeing that, pushing the pace and trying to get as physical as possible and going to the free throw line has been a struggle for the Kings in the fourth quarter. And I believe those two points are definitely some things that the Dreamers want to take into game two. Carla missing the first and dropping in the second one. Let, let's talk about import selection because the Dreamers still have Ilkan Kahneman, who they didn't choose active for this game, and neither did they for the Steelers matchup. As Davis Deventi with Big Sushi got a mismatch, but the Dreamers kind of zoning up now. Finally going with power as he smacks it too low, but for the Dreamers, Fallon transition. Ilkan Kahneman, eight wins, five losses, is the best winning percentage of the three Dreamers imports. But if you look a little closer, he is six and one at home, but only two wins and four losses on the road. And as we stated early in the broadcast, McCullough does kick up his scoring average on the road. But as we're seeing late into this game, so much of it coming at the free throw line as Jeff Wu, another close miss. Uh, definitely being able to play on, you know, not only your home court where you're most comfortable, but fighting through adversity on away games, you know, on rims you're not as familiar with, or baskets and the environment. Uh, definitely plays plays a role if you can't only play in home games. And just away games are just as important. It's Lee Kayin with a miss three, but fighting for the rebound. Uh, Dreamer went out of bounds. I think it's Chris. Aji will finally come into the game. It seems odd to me that the Dreamers have been kind of saving their ace in the hole in Aji. We had so much to tell you about. Last season kicked up his playoff scoring average of 17 points after it was in the single digits the first year, but they seem to be managing his minutes a lot. Big Sushi will try from three. Well, we'll see what he can do right now as he's in. Is, you know, now's an opportunity to get a lot of shots up and prove why he's on the court. Bounced out as McCullough can't beat the wall of Big Sushi and uh, Quincy Davis as the foul comes in. And everything has been tough for the Dreamers. Now for the King side, as we stated all of the last third of the season, one of their concerns is only having backdoor as Kyle has to throw it back in down. They only have Byron Munglins and Kenny Manigal. As JJ swallowed by McCullough on the block attempt. So for the two, those two gentlemen, they're gonna have to try to go the whole way, though they are two of the best performing imports, we could say, in the league. Of course, I mean, knowing your guys and having them be put in big positions at, you know, many different parts of the game. You know, even having only two of them kind of limits your options, um, as you know, you could add some more, but if you trust your guys and they perform at a high level, then you know, I don't see why not to just keep them and not try to add some more. You know, personnel plays a lot, chemistry plays a lot in terms of team building and understanding your teammates. 
and it seems like they have a good chemistry going on so far with the Kings, not only this game, but throughout the season. Kenny Manigold leads the imports in minutes played at 1,137. He's of course, number one in the league in steals, as announced last week, or this past week, I should say. 3.5, the brisk, another miss, and will violation on the free throw line. And he's second in the league in assists, whereas Byron Mullins, the November and February Porsche month MVP, getting a look, taking a step in before the ball hits the uh, iron. 16 wins as a combo leads the league. No other duo of plus league imports have nine as a little careless, but they say a foul on the play. Jeff Wu, though, holding his right shoulder. He's all right now. So like you said, those two have created a lot of magic out there. It also helps Quincy Davis, one of the top performing local players in the league, naturalized to play on Chinese Taipei so many years ago back into action for the plus league as Venti trying to avoid all the defense oh and the clock Davis showing off the dribble moves but it's a turnover for the Dreamers Jay Chen will go in go all the way for the layup as it looks like the uh, Kings want to call this timeout and get their personnel for some cosmetic minutes coming up. With five minutes and 28 seconds left in this game. Might be a little too late for the Dreamers to come back, but, you know, never say never. But the Kings definitely want to make sure that their you know, peak performers aren't getting you know, too much opportunity to get injured here in uh, a blowout game. It's, we don't want any injuries or any possible harm to come from these players. You know, when the game is pretty much out of hand, as they got to rest up for game two coming up. Well, the Kings are no strangers to their rotational sides. In fact, the last game of their regular season, they played with out either imports and Quince Davis also having to take the game off too. So 13 locals at least made it a pretty tight contest against the Lioneers, who got perhaps the best effort from William Martino and Jeremy Tyler in a long time, maybe to dominate down low. But finally, Coach Marshawn kind of loosening the ropes on for the back end of the rotation guys to get a lot of playing time. And during the course of the season, especially with Byron Mullins out, they got a lot of chances for uh, Omar to play at center and even Little Sushi having to start the year with his military obligations came in, coming in a little later in the season. He's got plenty of run and we've seen a lot of minutes even at Aventi too. The veteran who's considering retirement has played a, quite a solid amount in this season and even in this game as a rotational guard. So the Kings even look really healthy going into game two as it stands right now, whereas during the game, we saw Gilbeck take a stinger. Kenny have to go down with an undisclosed injury for now. So, yeah, definitely. You know, in high school, my basketball coach said, your team is only good as the worst player on your bench. So, if, they're, if the Kings are able to keep, you know, getting these guys minutes, you know, maybe in the last part of the games, but as you said, throughout the season, um, injuries can happen at any time. Hopefully they don't happen, but, you know, as we've seen, the Dreamers had to go go out with a couple of their main main scorers, main players, and other people's got to step up. So if they've got a lot of experience throughout the season, then that can really add a lot of depth to your team, and that's what makes the team so hard to beat. It's also hard to beat Quincy Davis, even after the ball bounces off the hard one on the rebound, but to see another play, Jay Chen, the early floater. He also participates in three-on-three -three competition. So some people say that might be his best venue. Earlier this week, the Absolute three-on-three -three had a press conference for the uh, women's competition as Venti was looking for Steve backdoor, but Aji blows it up. 
Uh, definitely playing in different scenarios, not only five on five, but three on three. Different, they're different games, but brings in a lot of different, you know, strategies and uh, opportunities to, you know, improve yourself. Not only fundamentally, but you know, overall as a game. Open on the baseline, out of bounds again. This time, Dreamers secure the rebound as Lee Jingbum checks in for the team. Coming over to help as Zobotun has to turn away. McCullough again forcing his way, at least made it close. Good effort by Zobotun, but he was already halfway out of bounds. A little scramble there, but we like to see the effort even. On, on every play, try to get that second chance, even third chance opportunity there on that rebound. And a, a technical foul called against the Dreamers. I don't know if it's on the head coach or if it's on the bench. So they had quite a bit of say in support of McCullough on that layup attempt. Yeah, frustration definitely going on the Dreamers as you know, they're looking to take that road win, that early road win in this series, but you know, some things have not gone their way so far during this game, and you know, at the end, that's when tensions are most high. Chant going on in support of the Kings. As they really, if you could give them a report card on the game, it's at least, at least an A minus. I would say so. The Kings definitely coming out and showing the Dreamers that, you know, we're gonna come out and punch you in the face early and try to take this game out early as, as we can and make sure there's no way you can come back. So Junez now on the scoreboard with that jumper. Omar guarding the pick and roll as number 18 Yansing and tries and he may be one guy that the Dreamers were saving a little too long. First jumper and he's money. Trying to stay tough on former college classmates long time ago in Tendrinan. So I guess they could have missed each other by one year. Jay Chang getting the mid-range and another bucket. So some of these bench dreamers are showing a little bit of life as I'm looking over there at Manimals. Gonna take off the warm-ups and try to check into the game with three minutes to go. Now we're definitely seeing you know, a very close game. Yeah, no one's giving up yet. And definitely putting on on a show for these some of these bench players is they're trying to show they deserve to be in the lineup. A little bit too strong, but McCullough on the rebound and on the spin scores. He leads all dreamers, but 17 points really coming the hard way. Second on the team, Gilbeck, 14. But he hasn't played the entire fourth quarter as Aji got a hand in there. Omar will be called for the moving screen. Trying to help out Tanju, man, but no, hard no avail. And rewarded with uh, an offensive foul. Yeah. Uh, trying to fight through that screen. Now the Dreamers will go all local. Probably want to see Aji get going, but pass deflected. And Jay Chan from way downtown. Well, the next game for these two teams on Sunday at 5, right here in Xingzhuang, where if the results hold, the Kings want to stay undefeated. Cheers for Omar as he tries to make a move. The left handed jumper a little strong. Omar has certainly, as we said in Taiwan, Trinfun, or gained a lot of fans from his efforts in the later part of the season. Presumably on the second year, second 
year contract as Aji drops in a beautiful jumper. As his time runs down, um, everyone fighting for each possession still, which is great to see as, you know, no one's giving up as a lot of hard defense being played and no easy buckets are being given. I'm sure that's what the coaches want to see out of their own players as Yang Sengen forcing Sushi into a miss. And we're looking for a guard as he commits the travel. Now, if you want to talk about one guy who's maybe developed some rust, it's Manimal number seven, Li Yao Zong, who played starter minutes with the Pilots in their very first playoff run, but traded over along with Hayden, has seen his role second to even like Dobuotun as a backup big. Yeah, it's tough, uh, you know, being traded to a different team and then not seeing that normal minutes that you're getting, but every player has a role and they gotta learn how to build their role to the best of their abilities. And, you know, even bench players have their role in terms of just trying to get the team a better chance of winning. Omar getting the pushback made. As loud as we've heard the crowd in a few minutes as the Kings try to put a bow on this victory here in game one. Aji takes out the defender and a second score in a row for him. Now the Dreamers get scoring across the board, but they're going to be taking this L as the Kings stay undefeated at home in their two seasons in the plus league. And they'll be trying to take a commanding 2-0 lead in this series as the Dreamers, after ousting the Steelers from playoff contentions, will have to get regrouped really quickly as we only have a basically a two-day turnaround for the next game. Exactly. Losing uh, by this many points is definitely not uh, a booster for the Dreamers, but definitely a lot of points that they've seen that they can work on, and you know, you got two days to work on, and it's definitely know what's working, and they'll just try to perfect everything in. You know, knock out all that little bit of bugs and rust that they've seen in this game. But overall, Kings played an extremely solid game. And Bears got a lot to overcome in the next game. The Rakuten Monkeys will be heading home. They have a game tomorrow with Taoyuan. But it's Jai who's finally gathered Amigo for the uh, post-game interview. Uh, it's Aaron Youngton and Eddie Tayanto on the Mandarin broadcast. So maybe we need to put in a final word before Amigo and Jai are ready on the court side. But overall on the game, Four Kings score in double digits, but that does include Kyle Lee Kayin, who got hot in the, uh, was it the third quarter? Nine points. Joseph Lin had a modest eight points, but only one of five shooting the three, so perhaps they can expect more out of him even later, though he did have seven assists, so looking top to bottom for the Kings, really got contributions everywhere, and that's what makes it a little dangerous. Now we're ready to go. Hello 把之前開會然後教練所設定的所有目標我們今天都有做到然後每個球員在場上都有做到自己應該做的本分那另外在賽
在曾经是领个聊到，在五天前才知道金牛在首战的对手是谁。那也今天在胜利拿下了首胜，也证明在刚才赛前谈的快速做出了正确的调整。但是比赛呢，每一场的都非常的高张力，对上梦想家还要再抢下两胜。敏哥在这个系列赛有没有想提醒队友的？ Asked about tips he has for the team going forward. Uh, in the ring, of course, I think I'll just use the ring to see them. Do the ring. 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 Do the ring.
battled back pretty well, but you know that lead is just too much for them to overcome. Uh, I would like to see the Dreamers, you know, play some better defense. They gave them a lot of open drives. They didn't pick up the ball early um, on these fast breaks, which led to some deep, de uh, deep penetration and either finishing at the rim or for an easy dump off. So I'd like to see them play some better, you know, transition defense and. They got to be more aggressive. They shot. Uh, they got a lot of free throws at the end, but they got to convert at the free throw line. As as we've seen, their free throw shooting was pretty poor. As we see the upcoming or the uh, playoff brackets, there Kings with a 1-0 lead on their side. As we mentioned in the last event, they weren't even going full throttle. We even look up Byron Mullins eight points, but was rather modest, playing a secondary role, screening out there. So the Kings. You'd imagine, as we say, have plenty in the tank with their rotations as well, giving guys plenty of rest as we see Pilots and Braves will be our next broadcast tomorrow. But Kyle, the Kings look strong still. Uh, of course, even though we talked about Byron Mullins didn't do so much on the offensive end, it was more about his presence on the defensive end and creating space for a lot of players uh, off that pick and roll and off that screen gave, gave them a lot of opportunities for other players to you know, develop and take over. And, you know, on this particular day, he didn't have to step up as much as, you know, he might need to later on in this series with, you know, some people might be struggling from, from the three-point land. As we saw, that was definitely something that they were not struggling with. They were shooting the ball extremely well. And, you know, sometimes if the threes aren't falling, you got to start looking for the ball closer to the paint. And when that time comes, you know, Mullins could, could uh, pop off. Thanks for that word, Kyle. Good analysis, but we got another broadcast tomorrow and a fresh new series to break open. So on behalf of Aaron and Eddie, six teams in the league in the league office, I'm Brian Chen. Kyle, good one again. We'll yeah, see you guys. Perfect. Thank you for having me. In the next one.